this is a guitar that was popular back in the mid 80s when Alan Holdsworth was um, maybe at the peak of his uh, fame I don't know he was always the very top for me um, but Ivan has made this guitar for him I think with his help back in the mid 80s they only made him for a couple years there was the AH Alan Holdsworth 10 and the AH 20 that had two pickups on it one of my um, tests that I put a guitar through when I first uh, pick it up is to play the bridge pickup by itself with no distortion and if I can generate uh, dynamics and warmth with just the treble pickup alone then I know I'm in the ballpark at least for me now, through the years I've just become enamored with one pickup guitars I have a feeling that there's a you know the lack of magnetic fields has to have an impact on the sustain of, of a string on a guitar um, I mean if you take any humbucker pickup and um, realize how much strength there is in those magnets you'll realize that it's got to make some impact if you have two and three pickups on a guitar so for that maybe I just have gravitated uh, almost subconsciously towards one pickup guitars um, my favorite guitar is an old Esquire from the 50s um, I have an old Les Paul Jr. from the early 50s that's just wonderful um, and they all have one thing in common, they sustain forever, and they're just totally rich in harmonics. Now, getting back to this guitar, um, number one, I found this uh, online, it was uh, in a bid online, and uh, nobody bid on it after a week or so, and so I got this guitar for under $700, which is definitely affordable these days. Um, I mean, from my experience, Ibanez, the signature top of the line stuff that Ibanez makes are just they knock it out of the park. They're just wonderful instruments. Whether it's the George Benson guitar, or the Schofield guitar, or the Metheny guitar, you know, when Ibanez puts their mind to it, they make really wonderful instruments. The first thing that you notice with this guitar is that it's it's a very great look. I mean, the black ebony and the only one pickup on this guitar makes it uh, pretty sexy looking. Um, but there's a lot of really great little features that Alan himself uh, wanted Ibanez to make. Um, so I'm going to kind of run you through them. Um, now, I know a little bit about Alan Holdsworth's taste and his style because I was a big fan of his. And the one thing that attracts me and I point out to students often is how great his tone was. Not necessarily how blazing his technique was. It was never about being fast to me, even though that was a really nice perk when he'd play those sheets of flurries of really fast, beautiful, exotic uh, lines. But to me, he had such a great tone in even like the single note stuff that he had played, even back when he was playing in SG or um, the early guitars, uh, on the early Tony Williams stuff. Uh, super melodic player. And um, so he kind of, being the scientist that he was, and if you'll notice on this guitar, there's like a little spider uh, logo on the logo, um, which I had come to find out through the years that he was a real... That was one of his hobbies. He was a real specialist and knew almost everything about spiders. So that was kind of cute. And um, I didn't think about it at the time, but through the years I found out that it was one of his interests. So having that scientific mind that he had, he kind of broke down and figured out a lot of things that really worked for him. Um, number one, the guitar is made out of basswood. Uh, light wood. Uh, the weight of the body definitely makes a difference in the shape of the sound. I mean, I'm still a firm believer that the neck and the pickups are the number one contributors to a guitar's tone, but the body um, kind of contours all that tone into one overall sound, for sure. Um, the lighter woods, the basswood, the lighter uh, pieces of alder or whatever, uh, they can be too soft, which I think was the problem with fenders on the early the pine guitars. But overall, generally speaking, uh, the lighter the body, the bigger the rounder the tones are, which is ideal for guys who are soloing lines like Scott Henderson and Alan Holdsworth, their lines were almost horn-like, and that's what they were kind of going for. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think the, the uh, lighter bodies make for a rounder, thicker tone for that, and for the clean chordal stuff. For the power chord, the crunchy stuff, a heavier body would be more ideal, I believe. Like, you know, Les Pauls, when you're playing heavier, you know, power chords and stuff. Even guys like Paul Jackson Jr. who play the real clean, it's real, it's a pointed real clean sound, where this is more of a rounder, softer, um, uh, almost compressed attack. Um. Now, there's other things that contribute to the guitar's tone. 
Alan also had a chamber um, routed underneath the pit guard, which kind of creates like a little, gives it more of acoustic qualities for obvious reasons. The pickup itself, I was always thinking that these pickups were super hot, um, but they're not. This one's like eight and a half around there, so they're not really highly wound pickups. So I came to find, through my experience, and I think maybe Al may have done this too, that um, I use a lot of like neck wines on my bridge because the lower wines have a clarity to them that's really um, desirable, I think. I've found that the lower wines pick up more of what your fingers do, and if you need more overdrive, you can always control that at the amp. But sometimes doing it at the pickup makes for more a darker, muddier sound. So I think this pickup, I was really surprised that it was only um, 8.4 or something like that on the on the meter. Pickup. It has a double row of adjustable pole pieces here, which I think you, when you cover a little more space on the on the uh, string area, you're going to get a little bit uh, bigger tone than there too, a little bit wider spectrum of EQ maybe. To be quite honest with you, I haven't really checked out this bridge too much because when I ordered the guitar, it didn't come with a with the tremolo arm, so I'll get into that later. Uh, I know he has an aluminum block on here, and I know that the strings are spaced a little closer together than on most guitars. Um, it's more like a Gibson spacing on a Fender scale, almost is what this is. Um, but that makes it great for vibrato on the high E string and the low E string. Um, I believe the frets are Jim Dunlop frets, which were 6100s. They're very sizable, you know, substantial frets. The neck is like a really comfortable D shape, I think. Um, I always get that confused because some people's D is another, one man's D is another man's C. The fretboard itself, the radius of the fretboard is super flat. It's like, um, well, no, there may be flatter, but I think it's like 17, something really, really flat. But what this does, it makes it possible to pretty much bend anywhere on the fretboard without it buzzing out. Um, I have the action super low, which all my guitars have super low action, and this one just rings true everywhere. The sustain is unbelievable. Um. It's a fantastic instrument. The intonation is great, has a graphite nut that helps you keep the guitar in tune, string spacing, the routing, the great pickup. Um, which I was thinking about changing, but I'm going to keep this one because it really sounds that great. On this particular model, on this, guitar, this particular guitar, there's two little holes in the pickup, which I probably am pretty sure that somebody must have had um, one of the Roland synth uh, pickups on there at some point. I know I did on my strats back in the uh, 80s and 90s for a while. They were trying to, to get some synth sounds, and they were probably trying to do the Alan Holger thing as well. The pots are super smooth. The body shape is kind of cool too. You know, I'm not a big, big fan of like really um, modern or tricked out shapes or um, holes in the guitar or whatever. Yeah, I've always been like a Strat Telly Gibson guy, you know. And this is, it's a very elegant design. And I just sit around playing G chords all day, and it's just a pleasure. <laughs> the overdrive sound this is kind of what it was famous for to begin with because you want to get that Alan Holzer with beautiful
with the Ibanez AH-10. Like I say, they make an AH-20, but the 10 is the one, I think, for me. Anyway, uh, they're affordable and they're awesome guitars.